thank you very much. It's a honor for me to be here. Thank to the Ashray Hellenic chapter to let me be here. And uh, I'm so pleased to be in Greece. And I will tell you that you have a wonderful country. So um, my subject is to talk about the strategic aspect of the commissioning process. Understanding the commissioning process as a first de definition as the journey into high performance building. And uh, I will try to share a number of things with you during my presentation by basically uh, share some international definition about commissioning, see the benefit and how, how we can implement a commissioning of a new, in a new constructed or major renovating building, also in an existing building. Also, will state the importance to well define the owner project requirement that is essential to make a building work. Also, I will be very happy if I manage to let you understand the difference between testing and commissioning. Sometimes, to explain commissioning, we have to explain what is not commissioning. And of course, I would like to take the opportunity to encourage the European industry, construction industry, to widely use and apply commissioning. Commissioning is probably among the top five favorite subject or theme of ASHRAE. Number of technical resources have been developed and elaborated in terms of article, uh, publication, standards, guide guidelines, and a very uh, useful course is available in ASHRAE. So first of all, let me define what is a high performance building according to, to the uh, 189 standard from, from ASHRAE. High performance building is a building that is well designed, well built, well operated and maintained in order to be very respectful with the environment, in order as well to see how its economic value increase all the time, provide the right indoor condition to the occupants in order to support their health and also their satisfaction, therefore productivity, by using construction material that they are friendly, environmental friendly, and by integrating systems that they use efficiently energy and water resources. I must say that developers, promoters, and user property owner, they are so pleased to have a well-designed, well-constructed, well-tested, operated and maintained buildings. But for occupants, occupants are delighted to work, to live, to study, to be recovered in comfortable, reliable, efficient, safe and secure buildings. To both ends, I will try to demonstrate that commissioning is essential and is quite instrumental. Maybe you can recognize some of the issues that you can find in these slides about new constructed or new renovated buildings. For instance, not well-defined owner project requirements. I will explain what it's all about, but essentially is a functional need, operational need of a building. There is always a gap between the design principles and the owner project requirements. Those design solutions, they are not well conveyed downstream to um, uh, operation and maintenance staff and also contractors. Poor construction, testing that probably has not been done. Lot of uh, equipment failure. Lot of complaint uh, from not the right uh, comfort, and of course, uh, people that are not well trained to manage the operation and maintenance of a building, of course, as well, not well documented. Did normally lead to buildings that are very difficult to manage. Let me see and uh, let me share with you some definition. According to ASHRAE, co a commissioning process is a systematic a quality process to verify and document that a building is planned, designed, executed, tested and operated according to the owner project requirement and being managed 
by a well-trained operation and maintenance staff. The British use another definition, is a bit of commissioning is about bringing building to life. And that is, is, is also very good. But you know, I would like to share with you what a promoter told me a few years ago. He, he said to me, thank to commissioning, I can get what I have paid for. And you, and you can wonder what is all about. He said to me, well, you know, I have paid for having a chiller, for buying a, a chiller, but what I want to have is the right indoor climate. Indoor climate is an owner project requirement. Another question is the system, the discipline, the areas, the installation, the system that need to be commissioned. And here you have a roadmap showing all the systems that can be subjected to that. Mechanical, HVC, plumbing, fire uh, suppression, fire detection, electrical, the envelope of the building, everything and anything having a dynamic of operation need to be commissioned. As I said, a commission, the main purpose of commissioning or the primary intention of commissioning is to fulfill the owner project requirement throughout all project phases. At the pre-design phase, the process commission should address to understand this owner project requirement, let's say the wishes of the owner. Then during the design phase, the main purpose of the commissioning is to check if the basis of design or the design intention is compatible with the owner project requirement and also to deliver what is called a commissioning plan that is going to, to be updated during the, pro the project du the duration. During the construction is all verification, all validation of the test result and also the training of the operation and maintenance personnel and also to deliver what is called a system manual. During the handover, the main responsibility is to prepare a gentle uh, transfer of the project, of the building, from the project team into the operation and maintenance staff. And the, during the occupation, there are some seasonal tests that need to be validated, then deliver the close-up or close-out report, and also provide the property owner with some metrics, some key performance indicator to monitor the performance of the, of the building during its life cycle. You know, I have been talking about all the project requirement. Let me see what, let me explain what is all about. Let's say that the highest responsibility of a property owner, and let me take the opportunity a bit to push them, is to clearly and to spend time defining and creating effective and detailed, completed, realistic and non-ambiguous requirements in order to make the building work and to make a commissioning process possible. What is in it? In this requirement, of course, I mean that the project owner should define the size and the purpose of the building, the regulation to be met, the occupant, the occupant needs, also, of course, the budget and the planning. But more important, the property owner should also genuinely sh show in this what is part of their, of their DNA, which means criteria related to energy performance, sustainability, reliability, life cycle cost, maintainability, uh, how to manage the guarantees, etc., etc. This should be very clearly specified in this document. So I always talk, take the opportunity to push, to push the property owner, developers, and promoter to spend time defining this and sometimes be supported by the commissioning provider. How the commissioning process support or addresses all of this? By making what it's called design review and also submittal review. 
But in this, it's not a normal review, it's not a peer review, it's reviewing the commissionability of the design. The commissionability of the design takes into consideration how these equipments are accessible, can be maintained, can be replaced, can be repaired, can be extended. It's all the little things that the commissioning process should address. Also, it's important and part of the responsibility of the commissioning uh, supplier, the commissioning provider, to, of course, validate the different uh, test results, the training of the personnel, of the operation and maintenance personnel, and some other things that is just uh, mentioned in this slide. Um, and, of course, uh, providing right documentation in order to, to make and to see the progress of the, commission, of the commissioning process. And, uh, and what is very important at the end of the project, deliver the property owner with some metrics, some key performance indicator to monitor the performance of the building. Important, very important, is to differentiate between commissioning and testing. I would be very happy if at the end of my presentation I have managed to explain this. Testing is done after the static comp completion and previous to the handover and consists of the verification and adjustment of the design, value and condition and is done by the contractors and manufacturers. So clear, commissioning is done, is engaged from the very beginning at the conception of pre-design phase and is coming through the different phase of the process till the occupation and operation phase. And is done by a commissioning provider, which is a third party, an independent party, is important, right. And also, what is the difference sometimes, say, and, but it's not that done by the engineers in charge of the project or the quality control company, no. The purpose of the quality control company is to verify that everything that has been installed fulfill the design specification. Hope that I have managed to explain the difference, right? Of course, an important, thing, uh, an important responsibility of the Commission is to validate the test result. What this test result, what is all about? It's about factory testing, static testing, about air tightness, pressure, in, uh, pressure test in pipes, pre-functional test, functional test, performance test, integrated test, and seasonal test as well, when the building is delivering in winter. And of course, I mean, that it has not been able to, to be tested in summer conditions. All of these tests are done, as I said before, by the contractor or the manufacturer. What are mainly the benefits of commissioning? Well, is to have a building that meet the owner project requirement, is operational from day one, is well documented, is well is managed by a well trained operation and maintenance staff. Let me also take the opportunity that sometimes say, well, we are very we trust this uh, team of uh, of uh, technician managing the building. Well. It's a good thing. Are they capable? Yes. Have the experience? Yes. Have they been trained specifically to manage this building? Yes or not? Because it's the most important point. And of course, I mean that have this metric in order to monitor the performance of the building during its lifetime. And then, thanks to commissioning, you can have any certification that you know in the market, sustainability or well-being, like LEED, Briam, Passive House, Cradle to Cradle, well, all these kind of things normally require that the uh, building, the system and the assembly are subjected to a commissioning, an effective commissioning process. A smooth handover is also one of the benefits to have a building commission. You will have less intervention from the contractor during the warranty period. Improve building condition and, 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 and a much better 
productivity from the occupant of the building. Of course, overall uh, good performance in terms of energy, and which is very important and is stated in, uh, in all the benefit of the commissioning in new and existing building is to extend the life of the building and equipment precisely. Make the successful factor. I mean that I must say that property owner should hire and contract it an accredited or certified firm or an accredited or certified commission commissioning professional. This professional should should report directly to the property owner. It's important also to integrate and to engage commissioning at a very early stage. Please don't wait till the last minute, just before handover. And also important key factor for, su for success is uh, try to convince the property owner to have a generous budget in testing and let the contractor do their job. It's important as well, and I must, uh, I must uh, say that this cooperation and full support from the property owner is essential to make an effective commissioning uh, process work. We can find exactly the same in an existing building. The same, the same issue I, I set before for a newly constructed, constructed building. And as a result, we will have a building using a lot of energy, much more than what it was the result of the simulation and the expectation, uh, an excessive number of uh, equipment failure, an excessive number of uh, comfort complaint from its occupant, and is the result of having a building that is inefficient, is uncomfortable, is unreliable, and very difficult to manage. So, what is happening that? Well, remember that when, when I explained to you what is a commissioning all, is all about, was to fulfill the owner project requirement. And after a year, this new building is not any longer new, it's an existing building. And it happened that those requirements defined in origin might have changed, or have changed. I will explain why. And then we can have a building, an existing building, that is not fulfilling with its performance the today's requirement. And we have to do something. Then I will try now in the, uh, later on to explain to you how existing building commissioning is a very good methodology in order to get a building back on track fulfilling the today's requirement, what the American call current facility requirements. Why they have changed? Why they have changed? Maybe the building was uh, sold out and we have a new owner, or maybe we have new occupant. The technology has evolved and is new technology available. Maybe we have a new regulation. Maybe those requirements that were defined in origin about sustainability, maintainability, reliability, energy efficiency have changed. And so these owner project requirements have evolved to what is called current facility requirement. And then we have a building that don't, is not any longer meeting those, those today requirements. And we have to do something. One very, very useful methodology to get the building back on track is what is called existing building commissioning. And it's a way, it's also a quality process by doing some planning, investigation, implementation to verify that the building is operated and maintained meeting the today's requirement, the current facility requirement, and having in place a very strong program uh, to keep those improvements that we have implemented in the building during its lifetime. That is a bit what is existing building commission. How is, is implemented this existing building commission? First of all, it's important that to collect all the information related within the existing building, from the, doc the documentation available and from 
interviews to the operation and maintenance personnel and the occupants as well. And I must say that occupants of a building are the best sensors in a building. Then we have to define what are what the requirements, the today's requirements are, what are the current facility requirements, and we have to see, okay, how we want the building work, and check the gap between the performance of the building and this current facility requirement. We need then to select uh, some opportunities of improvement, some opportunity to enhance and improve the performance of the building and verify when they are implemented, which, by the way, I must tell you that uh, from the long list of opportunities to improve, we will select some of them normally based on financial issues. We will select probably those where the investment has a, a short payback period. We will verify if the building is meeting the current facility requirement. Then this existing building commissioning will give the opportunity to check the training of the of the existing operational and maintenance team, upgrade the, the documentation of the building and put in place a very strong program, program called Continuous Commissioning Program or Plan. Speak five minutes. Thank you very much. So mainly the objective is get the building back on track. That is a bit of the of the uh, of the uh, main objective of the existing building commission. Then, what are the criteria to select the right building to implement an existing building commissioning plan? Forget about a small building. Select one huge building with lot of complaint, with lot of equipment failure, with a strong B BMS. Select one where the operation and maintenance personnel will be available and highly motivated to support uh, this plan. Select a building where the property owner is going to have also a very strong interest in making the building more efficient. Select one with a robust documentation. And of course, check out in the market if there are some incentive program that you can benefit of. And of course, as I said, strong interest from a stakeholder to make the building more efficient. What are the, the opportunities that normally we can see in an existing building uh, commissioning program, uh, the activities uh, that where we can find improvement opportunities? Maybe poor performance from critical equipment, maybe some equipment that are close to the end of their life, not well-defined sequence of operation, not tight that work and even not tight envelope of the building, pump and fund that are uh, oversized, unbalanced air and water distribution, not optimized uh, water temperatures, unbalanced pressure of the building, non well uh, set, let's say, simultaneous uh, um, load factor, a speed variator playing at full, at full uh, uh, speed, poor indoor uh, quality, uh, air quality, poor maintenance plan, personnel that are not well trained, all these opportunities can be fine and of course has to be addressed in a way to improve the overall performance of the building. And here you can see where um, uh, the most important savings when implementing such building. I will just uh, mention to you that normally, I mean at least in uh, air handling units, uh, uh, sorry, in, uh, in air conditioning, HVAC system where we can find the, the most opportunity to make a building back on track. Also, I will say that is in operation and control where the building can benefit uh, most out of it. And then I must say that in extending, in extending the life of the equipment is also a very important benefit from commissioning in existing building. Of course, it's a pity, but we see that also most of uh, building lose their energy efficiency in the first three years of operation. And that is why it's so important after the handover, doesn't matter if a new constructed building or a major renovated building, is to have a continuation of the commissioning process in order to monitor that these requirements, call it, call it a current facility requirement, are met during uh, the life of the building. And I must say that uh, it's very good to do that because, as I said, 
uh, after a commissioning process, the building is delivered at, at the highest energy performance. But this performance is deteriorated during the life of the building. If we have a, a continuous commissioning program, maybe the effort required to fine tune and to adjust the building will be less than if nothing is done. And we let the building just lose the efficiency and the performance. Uh, I must say that uh, the continuous commissioning uh, program addresses both the operation and maintenance, and of course it is supported by um, EMS and data loggers, I mean it is called monitor-based uh, commissioning. Here you can have uh, what you can do if you have a building, if you have a new constructor, a new building to be designed and constructed or major renovated, I think that the ideal process is a new commissioning process. If, is, if you have a building that was poorly commissioning, is better you recommissioning at it again. If you have a building having a lot of uh, a lot of uh, problems, high uh, energy bill, and have never been commissioning, retro commissioning is the right process to implement existing building commissioning. I, I talked before about it and continuous commissioning process as well. What are the common challenges for commissioning? Important, convince property owner to use commission and to engage commissioning at a very early stage. That is important. I must tell you that it will be a growing demand for, commission, for accredited commissioning firm and for accredited commissioning professional, believe me. And as a conclusion, I must say that historically, the construction industry has not placed too much importance to the potential performance problem of a building when it was designed in construction, trying to fix problem, problems at the last minute, instead of preventing them from happening from the beginning. Commissioning is a great, is a very, is a great opportunity if it's engaged at the conception of pre-design phase to address potential performance problem of a building and then to sort them out at a very low cost. Thank you very much. You have the biography and you will have.